here, and a lot of people make uh, New Year's resolutions, and uh, I was going to do as I do in the past, my resolution would have been not to have a resolution. But then I got to thinking about it, and um, I think my New Year's resolution is to renew and to restore my spirit in Christ. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about that, because what I'm going to be talking about are those that many of us complain about that are do-gooders, that, that are do-gooders. And, and I seem to do a lot of talk about do-gooders because I, I reflect on my own life and I see where I need to improve. And I think if we don't improve our lifestyle with Christ, that is a sign unto us that we're not seeking. We're not seeking the truth. So I picked out a couple scriptures. I'm going to have Jerry come up and read for me, if he would please. Yeah. I'll read for you too, Sadie. Yeah. Listen up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got a little comp. Uh, oh yeah. First of all, we have uh, John 14, 6. Mm -hmm. Thomas said to Jesus, finally cleared up. How can we know the way you are going? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Commentary. Jesus takes us to the Father. We have a home in heaven when life is over and we shall meet Jesus and the Father. James McGray, McGray wrote, quote, Who could mind the journey when the road leads home? Blessed assurance. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Commentary. We aim to please Him. Paul's spiritual motivations for service include the judgment seat of Christ, the love of Christ, the power of the gospel, and the commission of the Lord. What motivates you to do His will? The word of the Lord. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Um, you know, th this to me is the crux of knowing when you are a cr Christian or not. Now, if any of you are anywhere near like what I have been and what I have experienced in my life, there's times when I thought, how do I know if I'm really saved? Or how do I know if I am a Christian? A lot of people, we tend to believe that once we go to the altar and we see, or we see people go to the altar and we say, boy, that person received Jesus Christ. We, we, we had two or three people here today receive Jesus Christ today as their Lord and Savior. And I think that's something to rejoice about oh, yeah. and to be happy mm -hmm. over. Yes. But at the same time, that's when Satan is standing at the door and knocking also. He's standing at the back door and knocking while Jesus was standing at the front door knocking to let him in. So we have the evil and the good. We have the flesh part of us that needs to be disciplined and to be dealt with. And, the, and God's Word does tell us if we spare the rod, we spoil the child. And Jesus, throughout the Old Testament, when He was God, before He came here as the Son of, of Man, that He always, there was always some kind of con consequences for the sin. And to this very day, there is consequences, even in the New Testament, under the New Covenant with Christ, there is consequences for the sin. There is consequences to us after we go to the altar 
and we accept Jesus Christ into our life, that are we going to continue that walk? That's just the beginning. That, that's not even getting the, the whole big toe wet yet. Are you ready to be persecuted? Are you ready to be spat upon for the Word of God? Are you willing to be whipped or stoned for standing for the truth in the Word of God? Are you that kind of a Christian that's willing to put the truth first? To put Christ first? As Scripture tells us, we are to seek Him in all a-L-L, all things. And there used to be a laundry detergent called all. And you become all clean. And the blood of Jesus Christ washes our sins away daily. Not just at one time at the altar. Not just at one time when we go to accept Him. Because we are of the flesh. We will continue to grow in Christ. That's when we start the work is after we give up and we take the all we take the cross with us and we bear that cross. That's work. When you bear the cross of Christ, that's work. It is not it's not easy come, easy go. It's not once I go to the altar and I gave my life over to Christ, everything is is apples and cream. Peaches and creams. It's not that way. That is the beginning of your battle. Because you have the responsibility and you have taken on the responsibility to be a spokesperson for the Savior of the world. You have taken on the responsibility to be the feet in the hands of Jesus Christ. You have taken on the responsibility to allow the Spirit to dwell within you because you have taken on the responsibility to be the temple of God where His Spirit will dwell so that the whole world will know that you are different, that you are not of this world. You are to be set aside for righteousness. You are to be able to speak we are living in such a time where the majority of the churches of today are running and hiding with their tails between their legs because they are afraid. Just this last week, I posted about a, a, a street evangelist in Georgia that goes out into the streets and he is being persecuted and lawsuits are being filed against him. They're trying to do everything they can to muzzle this man because he's bringing the gospel to the people. The FCC, Federal Communication Services, is trying to close down a lot of Christian shows and they're monitoring them to see if they're biased or if they're politically correct. What do they know? They're taking political correctness and wanting it in the Bible, in the Scripture. We are not going to make it into heaven <coughs> if we follow the way of the God of the world. We need to follow the God of all creation. We don't need to be following Lucifer, who is anti-Christ and an anti-spirit that wants to mute the Christian, who wants to mute the church, who wants to give the new Christian the attitude well, I will minister, or I will go and minister if it's my calling. 
if God calls me to that. I've got to see what God says about that. Well, show me in the Scripture where God says you're not to. Show me in the Scripture where it says that you're not supposed to pray for one another. Show me in the Scripture where He says you're not supposed to take the Gospel to all four corners of the world. Show me a Scripture where it says that you are not supposed to uphold the truth and the inalienable rights that He Himself, your Creator, gave you. But yet we sit there and starve ourselves to death. We become anorexic for the Word of God. And we wonder why our churches are not growing. Why are the numbers deteriorating amongst Christians? But yet there seems to be a lot of people that call themselves Christian. That's because they're not living the Word of God. And God's Word Himself, He says, I am the living Word. I am the bread of life. When do we take those words seriously? When do we act upon it and let the Holy Spirit burn the truth into our soul? When do we let the Holy Spirit dwell within us? Just when we're having a howdy doody good time at church because church became an entertainment center? See, Jesus Christ didn't want the church to be an entertainment center. He didn't want it to be a, a club. He didn't want it to be a coffee shop. He didn't want it to be a concert hall. He wanted it to be a place where we gather and worship and pray and be taught. That's why Jesus was a rabbi. That's why he studied. And he studied. And he became probably one of the greatest well, in my idea, he became the greatest rabbi of all. He set the example so high that many of us cannot reach that standard because we refuse to allow the Spirit of God to lead us. We rebel. You know, I've done places where I've gone and spoke and showed about guide dogs because I'm totally blind. And I showed about the relationship that a blind person, if they're a Christian, that they must have with their guide dog and how the guide dog leads the blind person and guides him. And how sometimes that dog becomes disobedient it has to be corrected. Guide dogs are not perfect in all things. Jesus Christ knows that we are not perfect in all things. That's why He gave us mercy and grace. That's why He gave us the blood of Jesus that we can repent and come to Him and ask Him for forgiveness. But that means that we grow. That means we do not go back and do that again. Because we know he's going to take that choke chain and he's going to snap it up around my ears and I'm going to let out a yeah! Because it hurts. The Christians don't want to hear that. They don't want to feel the wrath of God. They want the goody goody two shoes, cotton candy every time when they step into the church. They don't want to hear that you cannot do this sin or that sin. They don't want to change their wicked ways. They want to compromise and make it politically correct. That's why the church of today is dead. That is why when you, if you are truly filled with the Spirit of God and you walk into most churches of this day, that you have the feeling that the pews are filled with skeletons and there are moths and flies flying around and dust balls. Because we have lost the true breath of life. Because we do not obey. We make excuses 
for ourselves. Well, I don't know if it's in God's timing or if it's in God's plan. Well, excuse me, go back to your Word of God and read it and see if it is. I want to know the truth. God bless you. God have mercy on our souls. May we live always in your life. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.